I'm dying, I thought, but strangely enough, I wasn't afraid. In fact, I was almost relieved. When I returned, I found myself once again in the midst of a bad dream. One whose meaning I did not understand at the time. I give you back your appearance. 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 Two sisters were destined to die. Julia, the first sister, and Martha, the second. On Julia's day of departing, identical twins stood before me, impossible to tell apart. They questioned my presence, since they were still so young. Julia must come with me, I demanded. But they both claimed to be Martha. I explained that Martha's fate was soon to be the same, and their games were useless. I didn't have time for it. The war was keeping me busy. But they didn't concede, and instead kept insisting. Can we follow you together? No, impossible. Are you sure Martha will die too? Nothing is certain in wartime. What if the wrong person went with you? Then you would have cheated death. One would die unjustly, and the other would simply be delaying her fate. They discussed amongst themselves, then hugged before one of them came forward. She stared in a determined, almost threatening manner. I guessed it was Martha sacrificing herself giving more time to her sister. But I stayed silent, not to reveal their failed deception. No one lies to the face of their own death. So I asked how their choice was reached. We do lots by throwing a medallion, she said quietly. They had trusted in fate. Oh, how naive they were. They knew fate plays by its own rules, which is true, but it is also my ally. Fate never would have allowed the wrong girl to follow me. In that case, my work was done. She must have been Julia. However, little to my knowledge at the time, 
That blasted medallion had the same name engraved on both sides. Martha's. So, my first assumption was correct. They were too damn smart, and had fooled both fate and me. One thing is for sure. I'll put things back where they belong. I will correct my ignorance and give fate back its blindfold. so bad. I can hardly breathe. Looks like Mother has been here all night with me, or rather, with Martha. She even left her medication behind. She can't live without that now. I would like to spend a moment with my sister, just me and her alone, before people arrive for the funeral and then take her away. No, 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 my bag is not here! My diary! Lapo's letter! How is she? How is my daughter? Please, Doctor. Please give me good news. It's a miracle she's alive, Eric, but she will be all right. The bullet passed right by her heart and exited her chest. Unbelievably, it missed her lungs, spine, and heart. She could have been paralyzed or died, but thankfully, she's fine. I examined her thoroughly. She didn't even lose that much blood. She was lucky. And you were lucky, so to speak. She was lucky that my wife went for a walk in the woods. Otherwise... Otherwise she would have bled to death, yes. I don't know what to say. All of this. It's too much. So much death and suffering. Nothing more. Don't worry, Erik. She's young, so she'll recover quickly. I'll be here all day anyway. Thank you, Doctor, for everything. Do you mind coming with me to pick my wife up from the cemetery? The funeral will start soon in the chapel. Of course not. Lead the way. You know, with all of these preparations for the funeral, Irina wants everything to be perfect. It's her way of coping, so she doesn't have to think about everything going on. She is a woman who has suffered so much. Maybe too much. <laughs> There's my bag, thank God. Let's hope Lapo's letter is in there.
There is darkness that brings uncertainty, but there will be a guide, something that can teach me something. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you and don't think you're dead? Everyone calls you Martha now, right? I know you too well. I can never understand why no one else can ever tell you apart. Not even your own mother and father. Martha is gone, and I cannot reconcile myself to that fact. I have to stay hidden, and sadly I can't run to you. Even if I would love nothing more than to hold you tight and cry together. No words. I just want to be close to you. Can we meet in the barn tonight? I will try my best to be there around midnight. Don't be alarmed, but if things get ugly, please remember this number, 6934. He knew he was in serious danger, but what about the letter? I had it in my hand when the soldiers ran off. Mummy found me, and if she's read it, well, she hates Lapo, and now she must know who I am. No, no, she probably would have left me there to die. She'd rather have no daughter than the wrong one. Before I passed out, I must have put it back in my bag. There is no other explanation. July 19th. I retrieved the cameras at the lake, but I had convinced myself that I was the one who had hurt Martha. So much so that when I had the rolls with me on the way home, I found myself in another horrible dream. I don't even remember going to sleep. As soon as I woke up, I developed the film. The photos confirmed to me that my memory of that night was correct. It was a great relief. I have decided to go back to the lake in an attempt to communicate with the white lady. I know it's a crazy thought, but I can't get it out of my head. I need to know what happened to Martha, so I must pursue every possible avenue, even the path of insanity. against citizens continues in La Romola, and once again General Kay's family has come under fire. Now it is the life of her sister, Martha, that is in danger. The blow from the gunshot in her back could have killed her. It is only by the grace of God that the girl is alive. The anti-fascist political motive appears to be the only reason behind the cowardly act. The New Zealand troops are advancing slowly. After the Battle of Poggi Bonsi, on the 18th, they are still far from the Tavernelli Val di Pisa. The German resistance on the Tuscan hills has been exhausting for the invaders. General Edith K. New rules on curfew and women's behavior. German command of S. Vincenzo Atori. Telephone number 1185. When it's not too sunny outside, the 200 ISO film works well. I should pick up the phone but remain silent. If I let the caller speak first, I'll find out who it is. Can you 
hear me? Is there somebody there? Mr. Eric? It's the nanny. I can confide in her. Nanny? Hello, it's me. What? Hello? Oh my lord, I must be dreaming or something. No, nanny, you're not dreaming. It's really me, it's Julia. Oh my god, Julia, my little sparrow, how wonderful. Sorry, but I thought you were dead. I, I saw you lying there dead. This brings me so much joy that... Actually, you must explain to me, my little sparrow, what is happening? I told Nanny everything that had happened. She was sad for Martha, of course, but very happy at the same time. I was the one she had a special bond with. I explained to her that I wanted to try and meet the White Lady, even if I knew it was a silly idea. But she didn't think I was a fool, quite the opposite. She explained to me what I should do in an attempt to meet her. It was complicated. I noted everything down carefully in my diary. Who knows, maybe she did it only to keep me occupied, while deciding what to do with me and who to warn. I won't ever know, though, because that very same day, a bomb struck the villa and she died. They all died. We should have been in that house ourselves, but instead... Poor Nanny. Bye, Nanny. I love you. Goodbye, my darling. I thought I'd lost you. Be careful, my little sparrow. Attempted murder in Laura Mola, after the murder of Julia Kay, today her twin sister, is the victim of another attempted murder. The condition of the young girl, found by the German troops, is no cause for concern. The political motive behind this is becoming all the more clear. But that's not what happened. It's all wrong. Mummy was the one who found me. The German soldiers shot me. Best to stay quiet. No one ever believes the truth. Even in Florence, the war is beginning to be felt. Supplies are starting to run out. Bread may only last a few more days. Prices are rising dramatically. Meat can now be found for 100 to 140 lira per kilo. The gas has been cut and there is no coal. Attempted murder in La Romola. After the murder of Julia Kay. New ordinance ban on the use of bicycles. Over the last few days, cyclists have once again shot at members of the Italian armed forces and at civilians in the streets. The offenders will be punished in accordance with German martial law. The Battle of Tuscany. German operations in the Livorno area extremely violent fighting in the streets of the city. You've 
called this number. Damn, Lapo must be dead then. Rest in peace, fair comrade. Yes, Lapo is dead. I am due- No, no, don't talk. We don't need to know who you are. By calling this number, it means Lapo wanted you to complete his work. A telephone cable near the house of German General Erich K has to be cut. One goes to the house, but there's another cable we suspect is connected to a secret base. That is the one that has to be cut. If you see any German vehicles around, let us know immediately. We won't use this number anymore. It's dangerous. Use a telegraph. That will be safer. I hope you know how to use them. Otherwise, you'll have to come up with something. This is important. Frequency X. Before the message, telegraph town on fire to identify yourself. Long live the homeland. Long live the liberation. Should I sabotage the cable and become a spy? I don't know. My father is German. It would be like betraying him even though he himself hates this war. But what happened to Lapo and those guys? If I can save someone's life, maybe I should try. Or maybe I can talk to Daddy about it. He may be able to advise me on what to do. I don't even know the first thing about all this. What were you thinking, Lapo? I decided to tell my father everything. I loved him very much, so I couldn't do such a thing in secret. I didn't understand anything about these things. I would have acted without knowing what I was doing. Daddy told me to agree to their requests and report everything back to him. He implored me not to get myself into any trouble like all fathers do. To cut the cable, I will need sharp scissors. Tailor scissors should be fine. Why would I call the asylum? Mummy was there a few years ago now and I wouldn't know what to ask. To be honest, I don't understand why the number is still here. Gabinari headquarters for the officers of San Casciano. How can I help? Hi, I was hoping to hear whether there has been any development on the investigation into the murder of Julia Kay. Wait a moment, please. Who's calling? I am Renee Kay, Julia Kay's mother. Mrs Kay, forgive me. I didn't recognise your voice. Unfortunately, I don't have any real news. We are following up on some suspects. We assume we're with the boy who was killed in the woods outside your house. They seem to be planning something else. But your husband is probably the best person to ask about that. Martha was taken to the chapel for her funeral. I want to say goodbye to her alone before everyone arrives.
When I was little, these barrels seemed enormous. I thought I could live inside one. Now I know what must be done to meet the lady. Nanny has explained everything to me. I must try to meet her early in the morning when it is foggy, or all will have been in vain. That's what the legend says. This is what I need to do. One, I must reinvoke her loss by putting her into contact with her lover. To do this, Nanny said to look for his grave in the woods, but there are so many. Daddy always said that infrared photos can see what the naked eye cannot. Maybe then they also see ghosts. There wouldn't be anything strange about that now, considering I'm trying to contact one after all. How crazy. Two, a part of me needs to enter her world. A lock of hair would work, so I'll need scissors to cut some off. Three, I will need an object that connects her world to mine. I don't know what to do for this yet. Hopefully something will come to mind when I least expect it. Four, to communicate with her, I will need to use my tarot cards. I will meet with the lady on the island where her lover was executed. This is the center of our farm, but since we moved here, it hasn't worked like it used to. Security matters, Daddy says. Poor little one. He's dead. Poor little guy. His place is by Martha's side. Nanny always calls me Little Sparrow. This is the part of me that died with Martha. It'll be safe next to her. Here, Martha, this is my heart. Carry it with you. I'm starting to understand how painful your condition must have been. Not being able to properly communicate with anyone is becoming increasingly difficult. I envied you, but I did not see your suffering. I did not understand your courage. I miss you so much, Martha. I'm not worthy to dress in your clothes. Commune of San Casciano, Province of Florence, Death Certificate. From the Register of Death Certificates of this Commune, Number 174, Part 3, Series 12 of the year 1944. It is certified that on the day of the 16th of July of the year 1944, Julia Kay has died, resident of Via Perciabaya, born in La Romola. On the 26th of February 1923, the daughter of General Erich K. and Irene K. Don Attilio D. will give the funeral and the esteemed Mr. Alberto M., who will look after the burial in the cemetery of La Romola. Telephone number 6537. The official state civil service. General Galeazzo T. That raven is making a big fuss. Maybe it's the same raven that killed that poor sparrow. I hate bullying. 
yet it seemed as if the raven wanted to bring the little bird back to life. dress. It's made from the same fabric I found a shred of next to the lake. In fact, it is torn. It must be my mother's. My goodness. I started to suspect that Mummy could have been involved in Martha's murder. Lost in these thoughts, hours passed and I completely forgot about the funeral. When I realized it was evening, they were already carrying the coffin towards the cemetery. She never loved me, I knew that well, but I would never have believed that Had it been her? I struggled to believe it, but it made so much sense. At the lake, she must have thought... When the funeral ended, I felt an irresistible urge to play. I loved music. I started playing without thinking about the possible consequences. I didn't care anymore. I needed to feel alive, to exist again. What's going on here? Julia? Is that you? No, it's not possible. Martha's never played. She's deaf, yet... No. This is madness. My God. So, Martha? I understand now. You can get all of the attention, right? You were jealous, weren't you? Because she was a wonderful girl and, and you're just a useless little slut. How did you manage to convince her? I get it now. But she... she talked to me. I... I... no. It doesn't make sense. I will have you locked up in an asylum. You hear? That's enough! You will pay for what you've done, you cursed lunatic! They will torture you to reveal the monsters in your head.
Her words were as sharp as blades. I tried to tell her that it wasn't me. I showed her the photos I developed that proved my innocence. But she grew all the more angry, calling me crazy, and then... She began to hit me with everything she had at hand. I closed my eyes as more darkness began to take over in me. Memories came flooding back, not memories of actual past events, but more so of feelings, feelings I had when I was little. They were scary, they were the fears of a little girl. Despite what had happened, I went walking in the woods early the next morning to meet the lady. The evening before, my father had tried desperately to console me. 